Hey guys, my name is David Laughlin, and today I want to tell you a story. This is the story of the white donkey of the jungle. See, the white donkey loved living in the jungle. His favorite thing to do was explore because there was so much to see in the jungle. He was always discovering new types of fruit and different trees and waterfalls, and he often got pretty dirty as he did this, just running and splashing through the mud. And that turned out to be his biggest problem. See, at the end of the day, he would come home and he would typically be pretty muddy and pretty dirty, but he would start smelling the delicious meal his mom had prepared. And he was so hungry, all he wanted to do was eat. But when he got home, his mom would look at the mess he had made of himself and say, you need to go wash up before you can have your dinner. Has anybody ever said something like that to you? Well, you know what? He did not like this very much because he would be so hungry and instead he'd have to go clean up and then eat his dinner. But one day, something happened. You see, that white donkey was out exploring in the jungle, and he came across a cave that he had never seen before. And he thought, I've never seen this. I need to go explore it. And so he went down inside that cave, and as he did, he began to ask himself some questions. He began to ask, what would life be like if I was different? If instead of being the white donkey, I was a black donkey? And he began to wish that he was a black donkey. He began to think, if I got all dirty, maybe my mom wouldn't even notice and she'd just give me my food. And as he walked out of that cave, something amazing happened. He had indeed transformed into the black donkey of the jungle. When he noticed, he got so excited. He thought, when I get home, my mom will immediately give me my dinner. She won't even tell me to go clean up. But something worse happened. He got home and his mother didn't recognize him. She said, you don't look like my boy. I'm not going to give you any food. And he thought, this is no good. So the next day he went back and he found that same cave. And he said, maybe I was better off being the white donkey of the jungle. And so he went to that cave and he began to turn around and around and make a wish. He said, I wish that I was once again the white donkey of the jungle. And sure enough, when he walked back out, he had transformed into the white donkey. And he said, this is great. Now I can go home and my mom will recognize me. She'll give me some food. So he went back home. But his mom once again looked at him and said, look at how dirty you are. What a mess. Go clean yourself up and then you can eat. So the next day he began to wonder, maybe I was better off being the black donkey of the jungle. So he once again found that cave. He went down inside and he began to turn around and around and he began to ask himself that question, what do I want to be? Do I want to be the white donkey or the black donkey? I just don't know. And as he was trying to make up his mind, the ground began to move in that jungle. An earthquake had came. In fact, it began to shake. In fact, it even ripped that cave apart. And before he could make up his mind, that donkey had indeed changed. In fact, that is the not true story of how the zebra came to be. You know, there is something interesting about that story. You see, that donkey couldn't make up his mind. And did you know that there is a different donkey that is more famous than the one in this story? We don't know his name, but he was famous enough to be mentioned in the Bible. See, on Palm Sunday, we celebrate the fact that Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. So we are told about this donkey. Now, a lot of people thought this isn't the way we expect someone who is a king to enter the city. But Jesus came in, and as he did, people were so excited. They began to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, and put palm branches in front of him, celebrating the arrival of Jesus, who they were cheering for and excited to see. But just like that donkey in the story I just told, you see, these people they couldn't make up their mind what they really thought about Jesus. Because they went from celebrating who Jesus was to just a couple of days later, instead of chanting Hosanna, they were chanting, crucify him. You see, they wanted Jesus to be killed. This person that they were just saying was so great was the king they had waited for. Now they wanted him dead. You see, they couldn't make up his mind. They wanted him to be nailed to a cross, and that's exactly what happened. In fact, today, these three feathers are going to help us think of the day that Jesus died upon that cross. The feather in the middle, the red feather, will help us think of Jesus. And you see, Jesus was the only perfect person who ever lived. He was absolutely perfect. 
He never did things he shouldn't do. He never said things he shouldn't say. And like I said, this red feather helps us think of Jesus. But did you know in the Bible, red helps us think of something else. In fact, we are told that our sins are like scarlet. That's kind of a red color. You might think about that and say, David, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. If the Bible tells us that our sin is like scarlet, why would a color that helps us think of Jesus help us think of sin if Jesus never sinned? Why would he be dressed in that color that helps us think of sin? But here's the thing. When Jesus was on the cross that day, it was not because he did anything wrong, but he was willing to take all of our sins upon himself. See, he was there to pay the penalty we couldn't pay. He died on the cross for our sins, but Jesus did not stay dead. See, on the third day, Jesus rose from that grave. And because of that, though our sin was like scarlet, we can be washed as white as snow. See, we can be forgiven, we can be made new. But that's not the end of the story. You see, the day Jesus died on the cross, there were actually two other people, two thieves. Now, one of these people, as he was there, he turned to Jesus. And you see, he recognized that he and the other thief were not like Jesus. They were not perfect. They were on the cross because they had done some things wrong. But he turned and he said, Jesus, I know you don't deserve to be here. But I know I deserve this, Jesus. But if there's some way, Jesus, could you please remember me? Now, I have to tell you, if I was Jesus and I was perfect, and somebody like that person who had done so many terrible things, he had been nailed to a cross, had asked me to forgive him. I might have just looked over and said, I'm so sorry, but I don't think I can do that. I mean, consider everything you've done wrong. Maybe if there was some way that you could get off this cross and go do good things to make up for the bad things you've done. Maybe if there was just some way that you could go apologize to some of the people you've hurt, even just this past week, then if they will forgive you, maybe I'll forgive you too. You see, that's maybe what I would have said, but that's not at all what Jesus said. That person, he turned and he said, Jesus, will you please remember me? And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Because he was simply willing to turn to Jesus that day, his sins were forgiven. When he died, he went to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. Now, some people hear that story and they think, well, maybe that's how I will live my life too. I'll do whatever it is that I want to do. Whether it's right or wrong, whether people say it's a sin, whether the Bible says I shouldn't do it, as long as I am happy, I'll do whatever I want. And then, right before I die, I can turn and say, Jesus, now I'm ready for you to forgive me, just like that guy. That's what some people think. But that's not what we should do. You see, we're given a reminder of that in the fact that the day Jesus died on the cross, there was one more person, one more thief, and this person, he wasn't like Jesus. He wasn't perfect. He was much more like that first guy. He had done some pretty bad things. But if you think about it, he knew he was about to die. He was hanging on a cross. And he was so close to Jesus. All he had to do was exactly what the first guy did and simply say, Jesus, me too. Please remember me. But here's the thing. Even though he was so close to Jesus, that day, he did not turn to Jesus. When his life came to an end, he did not go to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. And the thing is that none of us are perfect. We're much more like those two thieves. We've done things wrong. We've said things we shouldn't say. We've all sinned. But we all have a choice. And sometimes, like that donkey, we can't really make up our mind. When everything is going our way, when times are good, when we're celebrating like those people on the road on Palm Sunday, we're cheering and saying, I so love serving Jesus, but then the moment turn, things turn different, the moment life gets difficult, it's easy to say, I'm not sure if Jesus is the one I want to follow. You see, one of those thieves made the right choice. One of them did not. We're not like Jesus. We're not perfect. We're more like these two people. We can choose to accept what Jesus did for us or choose to ignore what Jesus did for us. Today, I hope that you have accepted who Jesus is. That you know today is a day we celebrate that Jesus did come to die on a cross and rise from the grave for us. And then no matter if things are good or times are tough, it's always worth it to choose to follow Jesus.